So for uh, Coventry campus, we have CEG. In a London campus, we will have study group. And um, this might not be as well known, but we also have our own separate um, institute not far from our main campus in Coventry called uh, CU Coventry. They okay. also deliver a small number of uh, foundation courses as well. Okay. So in terms of um, uh, entry requirements, it does depend from um, uh, country to country. Yep. Um, of course, with so many different qualifications, it's really difficult for me to tell you every single one because it can yep. be very specific. What I would say is if students are thinking of um, joining, whether it's a foundation or a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, put in an application, provide your educational um, documents from your transcripts, any certificates you may have. And what would happen is our admissions team would assess your application as a whole, including your personal statement, your references. And if they think you're not, you're not suitable for the course you apply for, they would then be able to make you a counter offer for the uh, next best course. So don't worry too much, for example, if you think I might have missed the entry requirements slightly, um, PCL will be very well equipped to advise you, um, you know, whether some courses have very specific requirements. For example, in engineering, you may need um, a maths or a physics background, and PCL will be able to give you that advice and they can submit an application for you and we assess it case by case. If you're suitable and we think you're a fantastic course, we'll be able to make you an offer, usually within three to five working days, depending on the time of year. Sometimes it can take a bit longer. Um, if we think actually, we still really want you, you're a fantastic student, we'll make you a counter offer if you've missed any requirements. Um, I'm not sure whether you wanted to me to cover some of the English um, yeah, yeah, options yeah. at the moment. Yeah. So traditionally in the past, we've always asked for a UK VI IELTS, mm. or if you take our internal um, test, mm. uh, we used to go to Bangladesh quite a lot taking tests. Um, I have a team who also travelled out to the Middle East, but of course with the current uh, COVID nineteen situation, travelling has come to uh, a stop now. We're hoping that we could continue this in the near future. But at the moment, we are developing our own online English test. Not quite ready yet, but whilst our internal test is being delivered online, we have a few other options for you. Now, we will accept um, Pearson PTE online, TOEFL. We'll also accept the IELTS indicator. You might want to just check whether it's available in your country, because I know that sometimes um, some countries it's not available, but it might become available in the coming weeks. But just keep an eye on the IELTS indicator. We also have partnered with um, Oxford International. And um, so um, I know that they charge usually quite a bit for their uh, normal testing. But at the moment, um, for any students who want to take an English test with Oxford International, um, the cost has been reduced to £50. Um, and you can use that to join our, both our, our PSE courses, our pre-sessional English courses, or for direct entry. And Oxford oh. International also deliver their own pre-sessional English courses, so you can have a look at and compare the difference. Mm. Um, I believe I might have covered okay. more yeah. stuff. Actually, there is another two, and these ones are fairly new. We'll accept Duolingo for pre-sessional English course entry only, not for direct, unfortunately. Um, but there's another test we'll accept, and that's where uh, password skills. Okay. So Duolingo for um, pre-sessional only, not for the foundation? Only. Unfortunately, only for pre-sessional courses. Pretty much all of the course subject areas covered from, um, we've got things like uh, uh, engineering courses in civil engineering, mechanical, to a wide range of business courses. Um, we make sure that every market is covered because we know that some countries are um, looking at third year entries for courses. Um, we have pretty much everything in all four faculties there should be something for every single student. Um, there's a lot of courses that we started delivering, which included um, masters with professional experience. Again, we've made sure that is also covered. Whilst we can't deliver 100% of our September courses, I would say there's pretty much everything. There's always an, a small alternative um, if something you wanted to originally wasn't already on there. UCAS would normally have their normal rig uh, rigid deadlines, don't they? Yeah. Um, but 
if a student has missed the deadline, mm. just get in touch with Coventry directly. We will sort you out. So we do have a lot of master's courses um, in mm. January as well as in September. So at the moment, um, we haven't officially announced our scholarships for September intake just yet. Uh, they should be released in the coming weeks. But historically, okay. um, mm. for the May intake that just had just gone, for the January intake that had just gone, and also the last September, we had a range of different scholarships from country awards. Mm. Um, so the country awards would be pay, uh, awarded to students in certain countries that we, we really want to welcome to campus. Mm. And the last time, from the top of my head, it included um, this is like Bangladesh. Um, there was a country award for that. Um, we also had another set of scholarships based on academic excellence. So if you found, if you um, achieved fantastic grades, uh, then we'd be able to have a look at your academic documents, confirm it, and also award you with um, another sum of uh, uh, scholarships. I hope that we will be able to deliver the same type of scholarships in September coming up. But until the next couple of weeks, I'm not entirely sure just yet. But we will definitely have something to offer for everybody.